I had known you were coming this way today, I would have covered the street with flowers for you to walk on. Good morning, Lord Darlington. I've been so busy planning for my dance, I almost forgot to get slippers to dance in. You're always the sweet exception. Other women think first of their costumes and then of the occasion for them. You know a great deal about women. It's rather too bad you've made it your only study. I admit it was a waste of time. I found that out when I began to study you. I'm not sure I like being observed so closely. What will you forbid me next? To look at flowers, to see the sun? What a fascinating Puritan you are. The adjective was quite unnecessary. Perhaps I am rather a Puritan. See, after my mother died, my father's sister took charge of me. She taught me to remember what the world is forgetting. The difference between right and wrong. She allowed no compromise. Nor do I. I wonder if you wouldn't consider a compromise in a case such as I happen to hear of recently. Uh, the case of a young married couple. The husband has become involved with a woman of rather doubtful character. So doubtful, in fact, that there is no doubt whatsoever about it. Uh, he calls on her constantly, and he's said to be paying her bills. Now, don't you think that in this instance, the wife has a right to seek consolation elsewhere? You mean, because the husband is vile, the wife should be vile too? No, vileness is a terrible word, Lady Windermere. It is a terrible thing, Lord Darlington. Look at her, there's Lady Windermere. My dearest Margaret, how pleased I am to see you. Agatha, tell Lady Windermere how delighted you are to see her. Yes, Mama. How do you do, Lord Darlington? Do have the good sense to leave us. There are two things a man should never find out about a woman. What she really thinks of him and the size of her shoes. I suppose we shall have the pleasure of seeing you at Lady Windermere's ball. Oh, it's not a ball, it's only a dance. It's small and early. Very small, very early and very select. Ah, we know that. I don't know what the rest of society is coming to. One meets the most dreadful people everywhere. They certainly come to my parties. Yours is one of the few houses left in London where I can take Agatha and feel perfectly secure. By the way, Margaret, have you sent an invitation to Mr. James Hopper? I don't know Mr. Hopper. He's that Australian everyone's taking so much notice of. His father made a fortune by selling some sort of food in circular tins. Most palatable, I believe. I fancy it's a thing the servants always refuse to eat. Mr. Hopper's quite taken with Agatha, you know. Of course, I'll send him an invitation. I'm so much interested in Australia. Agatha's found it on the map. It must be so pretty with all the little kangaroos flying about. Australia's a very young country, isn't it? Wasn't it made at the same time as the others, Duchess? How clever you are, Margaret. No, no, Darlington. You mustn't dream of talking to Agatha. You're far too wicked a man. Come now, Duchess, as a wicked man, I'm a complete failure. Everyone says I've never done anything really wrong in my life. Of course, they only say it behind my back. Goodbye, ladies. What does he mean by that? I suppose we shall never find out. Come on, Agatha. Yes, Mama. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, madame la Duchesse. Lady Windermere, Lady Agatha. Monsieur Philippe, voilà mes souliers. C'est trois fois... Margaret, you tell him, dear. He never understands my French. He must come from some little village where they speak a sort of patois. The shoes need stretching. My little toe hurts me, whatever I do with it. Il faut étourer les souliers, Monsieur Philippe. Je comprends très bien. Asseyez-vous, mesdames, s'il vous plaît. Et soyez ça, c'est bon pour me faire confiance. Je vais s'apporter une autre paire à Madame la Duchesse, et Madame la Duchesse va être enchantée. Merci. He'll bring you another pair. Yes, dear, I understood that. Et montrez-moi aussi des souliers blancs, bordés avec des perles. C'est exactement ce que vous décidez. Alphonse? Agatha, darling. Yes, Mama? See those shiny buckles over there, aren't they charming? Yes, Mama. Go over and look at them more closely. Yes, Mama. Dear girl, she's so fond of shiny things. Such a pure taste. I do so admire you, dear Margaret. You're being so brave about this. Brave about what, Duchess? And wise. But the best thing you can do is to take him to aix les bains vichy for the waters. Take whom? <laughs> Arthur, of course. Then you can keep him under your eye all day long. I assure you, my dear, that on several occasions, I had to pretend to be very ill, and I was obliged to drink the most unpleasant mineral waters just to get my husband out of town. He was so strongly susceptible. Now, I'm bound to admit he never gave away any large sums of money to anybody. He was far too high principled for that. My dear Duchess, won't you tell me what you were talking about? Well, say, Miss Model, Madame. Oh, toi, Julie, je vais laisser it. My husband and I, believe it or not, married for love, just like you and Arthur. We all begin like that. And before the year was out, he was running after all kinds of petticoats. Every colour, every shape, every material. Please, Duchess, what is all this about? My dear, these wicked women get our husbands away from us, but they always come back. A trifle damaged, of course, but they come back. What pretty slippers. Do you mean wicked women in general, or some particular wicked woman? I mean Mrs. Early, naturally. Mrs. Early? I've never heard of her. What's she to do with Arthur? And the dreadful thing is that everyone looked on Windermere as such a model husband. Please, Duchess, is it necessary to discuss this in front of her? He can't understand a word I say. I can't either. That woman has actually taken a house in Curzon Street, and they say that Arthur goes there four or five times a week. She must have got a great deal of money out of somebody. 
for it seems she arrived in London only a few weeks ago without anything to speak of. And now she has this charming house, drives a pony in the park every afternoon, and... Well, all this since she has known poor dear Windermere. But her house and her horses can't feed you to Arthur. Margaret, dear, tell him I'll take these shoes and I'll take them with me. Madame la Duchesse va prendre ses souliers avec elle. Yes, madame. Et envoyer les autres. Well, somebody's giving her money and it isn't Augustus. He's head over heels about it, of course, exactly what one would expect of him. But he's given her nothing. I know, because I examine his checkbook every night. You look in your brother's checkbook without his knowledge. Well, of course I do. Agatha. Yes, Mama. Well, get the shoes, dear. Yes, Mama. You're not going to cry, are you, Margaret? You needn't be afraid, Duchess. I don't believe a word of this gossip, and besides, I never cry. Quite right, my dear. Crying's the refuge of plain women, but it's the ruin of pretty ones. Au revoir. A bientôt, Madame Chester. Au revoir.